Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be making an updated keyboard and mouse settings guide for Fortnite. The last time I made a video about this was probably like 6 months ago. Regardless of whenever it was, a lot has changed since then. Don't you worry though, because I'm going to cover everything. From colorblind modes to new ways to find your optimal sensitivity, I am literally going to cover every keyboard and mouse setting you can think of. Because of that, this video may be a little longer than usual. I always recommend you watch until the end. I feel like way too many of you guys do not do this and then you have questions that you DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Obviously, I will help you on those sites, but it's better to just do it here by watching the entire thing. So with all of that being said, strap yourselves in because these are the best Fortnite settings for keyboard and mouse. Alright, as you can see, I am in creative. My hand cam and face cam are in different spots. Only reason for that is because when we go into the settings, which we'll do in a minute, I would block them if I was on the left side. Gotta be on the right side. What I wanted to say though, was that I kind of clickbaited you all with the thumbnail. In it, I have the red Air 58 and the GK61. However, those of you looking at the hand cam probably noticed those are both not on my desk. This keyboard is the Razer Huntsman TE, aka the TKL edition of the Huntsman. It's basically a bigger version of the GK61. It feels pretty similar to it. I'm using it because it's way better to edit videos with. I need a delete key and I need the arrow keys. Then the mouse is the final mouse I just reviewed, the Ultralight 2 Cape Town version. Go watch that video if you've never heard or seen this mouse. A ton of pros use it and I really like it because of how small it is. It's also the lightest mouse in the world and fits my grip pretty well. Anyways, let's get on to these settings. Starting at the top of the first tab, the video settings, you want to play in full screen mode. Windowed is not good, windowed full screen is not too bad, however, full screen is the best. In the description of the window mode, it quite literally says full screen mode will make your game run slightly faster. Here's some proof if you do not believe me. We're on windowed mode, it looks terrible, there are literal black bars, and as I crank, I can already feel so much input delay. Oh my god. My frames say 240, but it does not feel good. Windowed full screen is not too bad, however, full screen is the best, so use that. Next up, resolution. I play on native 1920 by 1080. If you do not get stable frames, I highly recommend 1600 by 900. I'll apply it so you could see it. It does not look too bad. It's a little bit blurrier. Builds look a bit more pixelated. But my game feels snappier. My frames are pretty consistent. Woo! It feels just as good, if not better than native. Same thing goes for 1280 by 720 It's just gonna look way worse, a lot blurrier. I'm telling you though, if you're not a content creator like me who needs to make their game look nice, definitely play 1600x900 or 1280x720. Tons of pros play this res, including Bizzle and Stretch, so there's really no need to play this high up unless you're making videos or streaming. Frame rate limit is an interesting one because Epic just put out 360 FPS. I don't even think I get it in creative. I'm almost getting it. I think I get it if I stand still. There we go, 360 stable FPS. I would not get anywhere close to this in a real game. The rule that you should follow for your frame rate limit is that you want to put it one higher than your hertz or your refresh rate on your monitor. I play on 240 hertz, so technically I should be on 360. However, that's way too high up and would cause micro stutters. You guys on 144 hertz, you should play 160 because it's one higher than 144. 120 hertz, play 144 FPS. 60 hertz, you could play 60 FPS. You could also play 120. Console guys, you don't really have a choice. Just do not go all the way up to unlimited limited and do not go all the way down to 30. You're going to get way too many frame drops using unlimited. Onto the graphic settings, I have brightness on the default of 100%. If you guys remember, there used to be a big issue where your game looked really dark, especially at nighttime. Luckily for all of us, Epic fixed it. You could see the game looks so much brighter, even the shadows look way better. That's why I play on 100%, not on what I recommended, which was 125%. If you want to, you can play 125, you can play 150. I don't play this high because all the colors kind of get washed out. I don't really like the look of it. In the end, it's up to you. You can go lower to 75. I wouldn't recommend 50. That makes it way too dark for no reason. You also get way more shadows. I would just stick to 100% or maybe 110. Do whatever the heck you want. User interface contrast is only for your settings, so it just changes the contrast for all of these colors. You can even see when I apply it, 
My game looks the same. All of this stuff in your menu, your friends list, that's all it's for. 1.05 looks decent, but I'm gonna stick to one times. Colorblind mode, again, I have it off on zero strength. This was mainly because Epic screwed up all the colors like I said before, so having no colorblind mode was the best. I believe Mongrel went back to Duder Nope. Let me crank it up. It looks way better than it did before. The blues are darker, purples are more pink, even the greens are a little darker. Feel free to play this if you prefer it. Protonope, nobody really plays anymore. I know Booga used to. This is definitely one of the more mild colorblind modes. Lastly, Tritonope is insanely bright. Your purple's almost pink. None of them really change how the storm looks, so I just keep them off. I'm basic, and that's what I prefer. Now for the graphics quality. The auto set quality option is the worst and most useless button ever. All it does is it takes your hardware, aka your PC specs, and then it spits out a bunch of really high presets that you don't ever want. So I'll press it. You can see it changed me to 60 FPS, all epic, motion blur on. Oh God, I'll apply it for the memes. Oh my God, what the heck is this? That is worse than console. And I love you console guys, but that is not good. What you should do is change the quality preset to low and that changes all of these to near, off or low. Then put the 3D res on 100%. This will make your game look nice and give you a lot more FPS than any other settings. The only one of these that I would change is view distance. You could put that up to epic. This makes things like weapons or mountains in the distance spawn in earlier. I can see that mountain. However, you'll be able to see your opponents at the same distance on near or epic, so it really does not give an advantage. Shadows have off, shadows are useless. Anti-aliasing, if you want, put it on medium, it's not too bad. Anything higher will drop your FPS though. Textures you can have on medium as well. I have heard that playing on high can improve your FPS if you have a GPU bottleneck. That worked in chapter 2 season 1, so you might want to try it out. Finally, effects and post-processing have on low. They are really bad. They do not look good. Turn them off. Speaking of useless settings, V-Sync. All V-Sync does is reduce your screen tearing, but at the same time, it makes your game feel like crap. It reduces your FPS. It really does not do anything good. If you get screen tearing, do not use the Fortnite in-game V-Sync, just use the one in NVIDIA. Motion blur is for montages, it looks bad, I don't like it. It can also give you nausea as Fortnite says. I suggest turning it off. Show FPS, turn on, we gotta see those gains. Then DirectX version is an interesting one. I get more stable FPS on DX12, not higher, just more stable, which is kind of weird to think about. Epic even says that it may offer a performance increase over DX11 and that it's newer because because it's in beta. Since I'm feeling nice, I guess I'll do a little test. Unlimited, I get about 490, 480 at the highest, and then 440 at the lowest. I get around 440, 450 stable. That's with DX12, now DX11. I gotta restart the game. I'll see you boys in a minute. I'm on DX11, let me look at the sun. So you can see I get higher, but less stable. I'm at 550 at the highest, I saw it at 380. It drops down way faster, 297. It's weird, it's not as stable, and I honestly do not know which is better. Like it doesn't feel any different as I build. You can see it doesn't go as high though. It drops way more when you build. In game, I usually get way more micro stutters with DX11. That's why I changed to DX12. So try both out. They're both pretty good. I prefer DX12 because it's more stable. It depends a lot on your PC, your specs. Make sure you at least experiment. Multi-threaded rendering is one that will benefit most of you if you have it on. All it does is help your CPU use more cores for Fortnite. The only issue with that is that if you do not have more than four cores, it's not really going to work. It's actually going to get you lower FPS. I have some like six or eight cores in my CPU which is why it benefits me. Anyone who has less than four cores turn it off but like I said make sure you try out both. Lastly is use GPU crash debugging. I have that off because it will reduce your FPS. I think technically it helps Epic to have it on but screw Epic. Just kidding do not hurt me Donald Mustard. I love you. I just don't want to be giving you my FPS. Sorry. On to the game settings. I'm NA East. Language. English. Toggle Sprint I have off because I use sprint by default. When you have sprint by default on, this is useless, so it doesn't matter whether it's on or off. If you don't know what sprint by default is, I don't know what you're doing, you need to have it on, it's the best setting ever. I don't even need to press left shift, which is how you usually sprint. All I'm pressing is W, and I'm sprinting. 
going right and left, still sprinting. I actually use left shift to crouch, which is really useful. A lot of pros have it on their cone binds. My point is that sprint by default is amazing. You never really need to run like a bot, which is that slow run, which you can't get with sprint by default. However, you get a free key bind. You can sprint without pressing it. Sprint by default is awesome. After that, sprint cancels reloading. You don't really want that. That messes up your movement. I guess I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm reloading and then I sprint. It stops it. You do not want that. You want to be able to shoot, reload, and reload as you move forward. You're a clown if you have sprint cancels reloading on. Turn it off. Auto open doors you definitely want on. People used to be scared of this because they thought they would go too close to a door and accidentally open it. You have to get ridiculously close for it to open. And that is really good for accidentally editing a door because you never lose your momentum. Say you're fighting someone, accidentally edit a door, no problem. You can also do tricks with it faster that open the opposite way. Doesn't matter. I'm phasing through. There's so much you could do with auto open doors. Turn it on. Hold to swap pickup. I have it off. Toggle targeting as well. Turn it off. What it does when it's on is as you aim down sight, you only have to press right click once. You can see I'm not even holding my mouse. You want to be able to hold right click, let go quickly, and do that over and over again for quick pumps quick AR beams. Also, you can pretend to be a controller scrimma. All of what I just showed is with toggle targeting off. You do not want it on. Mark danger when targeting is just your ping. You can make it red. I recommend having it on because it is pretty useful. Auto pickup weapons is one I used to tell people to have on. Now I have it off. Basically, if you run over a weapon you did not drop yourself, It'll pick it up without you even pressing the interact key. And that, in theory, is useful for 50-50s. Like, if you drop on someone, you can just run over the weapon, pick it up, and kill them. As you use it in games, especially mid-game fights, you end up picking up random weapons, and you'll end up with, like, five ARs like I have. It's just kind of annoying because you have to end up dropping it. That wastes time. You can see it's annoying. So, I just have it off. Auto sword consumables to right, you definitely want on. Most people keep their heals on the right side of their inventory, so what this does is it does it for you. If I interact with it, it drops it all the way to the right. Without it on, it would go into the first slot like the grenades did, and then I'd have to move it, it would be annoying, so why not have the game do it for you? Reset building choice is for controller players, so keyboard and mouse, it really doesn't matter. I have it on, I don't know why. Turbo building is for keyboard and mouse and controller, and you definitely want it on. Turbo building is what allows you to hold left click and build whatever the heck you want. Without this, you would have to spam click. That is why Myth was good back in Season 2. We are in Chapter 2, and you need turbo build on. Unless you just don't want to be able to crank and build fast. My absolute favorite setting ever is confirm edit on release. You should definitely have that on for keyboard and mouse because it's so much better than editing normally. What it actually does is allow you to just press your edit key once and then finish the edit by selecting and letting go of left click. That's how it confirms the edit. All you do is let go of left click. I no longer have to press my edit key a second time, which is not optimal. Why would you do something in two steps that you can do in one? It's so much faster, so much better for your movement, your keybinds. The only downside is that you can't make edits like this in one motion. You have to edit twice. And that applies for walls as well, which is one reason why people don't like it. You can't bring your crosshair down and wait to confirm the edit. You have to leave your crosshair up here or else you'll just edit this, screw up the edit. Overall though, the pros heavily outweigh the cons, and most professional players nowadays actually use it. Booga, Stretch, Bizzle, all of them use Confirm Edit on release. Extra game options are kind of random and not really that important. Invert view just makes up, down, and down, up. You do not want that. For some reason, I have that for my airborne controls. I don't know why, but there's no planes in the game anyways. This is for creative. Nvidia highlights, doesn't matter. Peripheral lighting, turn off for better FPS. PS. Tap to search you definitely want on if you're using a scroll wheel to interact. Scroll wheel to open chests will not work if you do not have that on. You'll just sit there doing nothing. Replays I have on just because I'm a content creator. They do use a lot of FPS so you can turn them off. I recommend you do. It's really up to you. 
Third tab is your game UI, aka the HUD, HUD options. I have mine on 100%. I would probably have it on higher, like 125 if I was a comp player. I know it looks weird, especially your HP and your shield. So big and it takes up a lot of your screen. However, it's so much easier to look at how many mats you have. All of that important stuff, there's no reason to make smaller. I see people playing on like 75% or 25% because it looks better. But like you can't even see your weapons or your mats. Why would you put it that low? Maybe I'm a boomer, but those are just my thoughts. In terms of the actual options, you should have all of them on except for the quest progress indicator. That's annoying. The creative runtime performance is useless. Turn that off. And I also turn off reticle ammo indicator. That is this thing next to your crosshair. I just feel like it's annoying. It takes up too much of my screen. And I usually know how much ammo I have. There's also an audio signal you get when you get low. You could definitely have it on, but most people do not. And that wraps up the HUD options. Now for your sensitivity. I currently play on 11.5% X and Y. That's what I found to be the best for my aim and my building. I can still crank, do triple edits, and I can hit all my shots, especially with a shotgun. The method that I use to find this number is called the PSA method. Basically what you do is you take your mouse and you find the sensitivity that makes one perfect 360 from one side of your mouse pad. I have a really big one so I do it from where my keyboard is. You want to find the sense where when it goes from the other side it does a perfect 360. That was a little bit more, which means it's not a perfect 360. It's a little bit faster since I have a pretty big mouse pad. I would guess a perfect 360 is maybe like 9.5, which is really low. Let's try it looking right here. Is it almost? Oh, yeah, that's basically a perfect 360. 9.5%. How you use the PSA method is you start with this number and then you either go higher or lower depending on what your preference is. 9.5 I know is going to be way too slow. I can kind of crank with it. Yeah, I'm messing up edits though. <laughs> My gosh, it's so slow. So I already know that's way too slow. And basically what you want to do is you go 1% up or 1% down. I'm going to go to 10.5% because that is 1% up. And you do the same exact thing. Is it too slow? Is it too fast? Let's see if I'm box fighting. Oh man, even this is too slow. I'm not mongrel, I can't crank that hard. So again, I would go up 1%. You can go up 0.5% or down 0.5% as you get closer to the number you like. 11.5%, this is my actual sense. And yeah, this is basically perfect. This is the perfect sense for me. So that's basically the PSA method. Again, you want to start by finding the sense where from one side of your mouse pad to the other, that is the sense. Mine was 9.5. Yours will most likely be higher. Then you either go up or down 1% to find which one you like. I settled on 11.5. Your targeting sensitivity is basically your ADS sense. That is how fast you move left and right, up and down while aiming in with an AR, SMG, shotgun, any sort of weapon. It's also a multiplier of this sensitivity, so this is 30% of your X and Y. I recommend starting at 50% and then going down and finding what you like. I like 30 because it's really slow, it helps me track my opponents. But it's not so slow where I cannot just flick onto someone's head from close range. One thing I've seen a few people do is play 100%, aka 1.0. And that means your normal X and Y hipfire sense is the same as aiming in. It does not slow down at all. And this kind of makes sense because you could basically flick much easier. The benefit is of course the tighter spread. I think aiming in should be for when targets are far away or for when you really need to hit shots and that is best when you have a low targeting sense. Something below 50% is optimal, at least in my opinion. Scope sensitivity is basically the same thing except for snipers. Let me get a sniper. I have it a little higher than my ADS sense because I like to be able to flick. However, I still have it pretty dang low because you want to be able to hit your snipes and that is very difficult with a high scope sense. All of these settings are useless. Ignore gamepad input, does not matter on keyboard and mouse. And this is for flying aircrafts, which are not in the game. 
controller options we're gonna skip because again this is keyboard and mouse settings i'll quickly go through the audio ones even though they're not that important these are all preference sound quality i have on high i've heard that having it on low can improve your fps i prefer the high setting 3d headphones is only good if you have a pair of really high quality studio headphones mine are from hyperx they are hyperx cloud alphas so they're not studio headsets it's just a gaming headset and would not benefit from 3d headphones background audio does not not matter visualize sound effects i have off i know a lot of people like them on the only reason i have it off is because it does reduce your fps after that voice chat does not matter it's all preference whatever you want it's basic stuff Essentially, the last thing we're gonna look at are keybinds, and there are a lot of them. We're only gonna do the important ones, starting with your movement. Movement, I play on WASD, that is the standard. I jump with spacebar. I have no sprint key because sprint by default. Auto run on Y, and crouch with left shift. It honestly does not matter whether you use WASD, ESDF, RDFG if you want, even IJKL, which I made a video on. All of them are fine. What matters is that you have your crouch key on your pinky or your thumb. You do not want your crouch key on your index or ring finger. Anytime you crouch, you need to be able to move right and left at the same time. If you don't, you're gonna look like a clown because you're gonna crouch and then not be able to move to the right or left. That's why I have it on left shift. I know a lot of people have it on left control, which is also very good. C works if you hit it with your thumb. Do not use C with your index finger. It needs to be on your pinky or thumb. After that, combat, I have most of these on the default. You wanna fire with left click, target with right click. All of that is pretty simple. Reload I have on R. I've seen people who use it with their scroll wheel, they click it in to reload. I've also seen people put it on V or left alt. The big one that I changed is my use or interact key. I have that on mouse wheel up, which I believe is the most optimal pickup key. All I have to do because I've tapped to search on is scroll up and it picks up my weapons. If I want to open a door, I do the same thing. I scroll up. This is really useful when you drop on someone because you just spam your pickup key, aka scroll up a million times, and you'll actually be able to win most 50-50s with that. Harvesting tool, I have on 1. My weapons are on 2, 3, 4, 5, and my final one is on V. These are just keys that are near WASD. They're easy to hit for me. I have no problem hitting 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5. I always see a lot of comments from people saying that they cannot hit their numbered keys, which is perfectly fine, that is normal. Just find keybinds that you do not use for anything else, like I don't use G, I don't use C, I don't use Z either. Those all make great weapon keybinds. After that, we're on the building. Your wall, I highly recommend putting on your mouse side button along with your stairs. And the reason for that is because it gives you full control of your movement while building. That is what Optimal Keybinds is all about. Being able to move right and left as you hold out your wall. As you replace a wall, you can move to either side. As you're running on your ramp, you can move back and forth. That is the most optimal you can get. The keys that I do not have that for are my floor, which is on F, and my roof, which is on Q. To place both of these builds, I have to take my finger off my movement key. So like if I place a floor, I have to press F. I'm not pressing D. I cannot move right. I can only move left. And that means it is not optimal. I don't have full control of my movement while I place my floor. This also applies when I bring out my cone. I can no longer hit A. I can only move right. You want to try to avoid this if you can. Obviously, it won't be possible for everyone like me. If I could, I would change my floor to V or C and hit that with my thumb. Unfortunately, I cannot get used to that. It's a little too late for me. And I would put my roof on left shift. Currently, left shift is for crouching for me. I would put that on left control instead. Only reason I don't now is because it is really hard for me to bend my pinky. I messed up my finger way back in the day playing basketball and unfortunately it has never really healed so i'm stuck with left shift as crouch i'll reiterate the most optimal ones wall and stairs you want in your thumb mouse buttons floor you want on either left shift or your thumb and same goes for your roof after that trap i have on t you could use whatever you want it's not really that important especially because traps are no longer in the game place building is on the default left mouse button repair slash upgrade is on g rotate building r change material right click building edit i have on e because i believe e is the best editing key in the game Left shift or your thumb if you could use it are also good. I just feel like it's so much easier to spam with your index finger compared to your thumb or your pinky. 
It's also decently close to WASD, so your movement is not too bad. It's way better with confirm edit on release than with it off. It's also 10 times better than reaching all the way over to G. Stop editing with G. Switch to E or F. After that, my secondary building edit is on mouse wheel down, and that is because I have reset building edit, the secondary one as well on the same keybind, mouse wheel down. What this does is it sets up your scroll wheel reset. All you have to do is edit, scroll really hard while looking at the edit, and it will reset automatically. Look how broken this is. All the controller kids are pissed. Scroll wheel reset is so broken! Select building edit, you could do right or left click. The rest of these are not too important, I'll show them. The only one that matters I guess is toggle map and inventory. I use M for map and tab for inventory. All of this I really don't even need to show. Drift boards and ballers are not even in the game. I guess choppas and motorboats are. That's basically it though. Overall guys, those are the updated best settings for Fortnite Battle Royale on keyboard and mouse. I apologize for making the video so long, but I had to include everything. So if you enjoyed it or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel down here, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian, I appreciate you guys so much. The support has been crazy recently, so please keep it up. It's motivating me a ton to make new content and try out new ideas. You'll see what I mean by that soon. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!